Hi everyone, this is Navika Chauda here, a cloud engineer and a Microsoft most valuable professional in developers technology. I warmly welcome each one of you to the fourth episode of Tech Chat with Navika, wherein today we would be discussing about cracking software engineering roles and startups. And for that, we have an expert with us today, Mr. Saurav Singh. Saurav is an AVP engineering at Zomato. Having worked at big tech startups such as Flipkart, Rivabo, Zomato, and that to our leadership positions, he has more than 10 plus years of extensive experience in the field of engineering and startups. He holds a B.Tech and an M.Tech degree from one of the most prestigious institute, IIT Delhi. He is one of the true leader who believes in empowering his teammates and is always willing to help others. Thank you so much, Saurav, for taking out your precious time. And I'm sure you must be having a hectic day. That too at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No issues. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. And uh, thank you so much again for an overwhelming uh, introduction. Uh, we're, like, we're excited to be here and would we'll love to answer your questions. The main question which I'm sure people would l love to hear about from a person like you. If someone wants to apply for a software engineer role at Zomato, what are the skills that you look in for a person? And this is very specific to Zomato. Uh, like very specific to sort of Zomato, it's I think in my interview style, it, it might be very specific to all the startups I have been in. Okay. And, uh, and slightly, there is a slightly different culture in, in Zomato, I would say. And uh, okay. first of all, we do not differentiate people based on their college credentials. Uh, okay. You might be from tier one, tier two, tier three. It's absolutely depends on what you have done in the past and what's your current state now. If you are a champ in your current state, being from a tier three college, you are equally welcome to get interviewed at Zomato. And you will be totally judged on how you did well in your interview compared to what you did in your college and before college for preparing for these exams. Right? So that is not something come into our mind. And... Uh, <clears throat> In terms of skills, it all depends on at which level we are hiring for. So I have interviewed people all the way from SC1 to engineering managers all over here. When we interview a fresher out of college, the, the qualities that we look is slightly different from when we interviewing someone who is at coming at an EM or SEM level, right? So uh, there is a concept that I use is, is, is called coachable versus non-coachable skills. Uh, like understanding a technology, knowing a technology uh, is something and uh, knowing the concepts is something, right? Probably. So what a database is, how you use databases, how you store data, how you create a schema is one part of it. One part of understanding the technology versus if you know Dynamo, how Dynamo DB works or how, uh, like, let's say, uh, Cassandra works is, is a different thing, right? So these are the concepts which can be coached, right? Uh, if, if you have not used how DynamoDB works in college, that is absolutely fine. The company at Zomato might be using DynamoDB or MySQL or something like that. And you, you, if you might not have worked in college, and that is absolutely fine. But at least you know the basic concept of DBMS, how databases work, right? So we, you will not be judged on if you know certain technologies. You will be judged on you at least know the concepts of those technologies, right? So that is the part of coachability versus non-coachability. The second part is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a lot of people, it, it might be uh, controversial for a lot of people, but I do judge people on their data structures and algorithm skills. Uh, a lot of people might say I'm not good at data structures and algorithm, but I am very good at software development, right? But uh, mm -hmm. I think I use a very, uh, uh, probably cliche line. I have been yeah. I've used this for multiple times, but uh, I use this line that I, any logical person in the world can code, right? If you have, if you can understand logic, uh, mm -hmm. Like what is if, what is else, what is a loop, something like that. You, if you repeat something, it will happen multiple times. It is logic, right? So if yeah. you know the logic, you can learn coding uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you understand English probably. And then after you, you can you can learn English. Uh, sorry, you can learn coding very quickly. What yeah. make you different? What the differentiator between a good software engineer versus bad software engineer or average software engineer is is given a problem, how efficiently you solve it, right? writing the code and writing the code efficiently which saves cpu which saves money which make it faster to run something like that is, is something which differentiate you from the others right so if you are working in a company at a which which runs at a very high scale uh, which has to save a lot of infrastructure cost which have to make sure that 
nothing breaks on the production all the corner cases are handled all the ca- cases are well tested then obviously the skills like uh, whether you write code uh, more vigilantly in terms of writing in a way which is more efficient versus just writing it to pass the test cases that if i given a a input i get a b output then that is the differentiator right and someone who understand data structures and algorithm is i assume and i believe are better in terms of making the code more efficient versus someone who doesn't understand mm-hmm. it. so mm-hmm. that that is where i judge at least pressure out of the college on these skills as well i'm not i do not judge people on very tricky questions i won't give a question that find the median of an unsorted array which is very <laughs> difficult problem to solve in an interview uh, mm-hmm. i i am sure a lot of people who will be watching this interview will say okay that is a easy question but trust me that that's not a that's not a easy question uh, uh, but uh, i will rather give them the question which is solvable and i would not judge them on the fact that whether they get the right solution but i will judge them on the way they are going to, like reaching towards the solution right they start with the basic running solution then go towards optimizing it because that is the way you will be actually creating software right you will mm-hmm. first create the mvp minimum viable product if that mvp works business works there is a product market fit then you goes on adding more features to it right and that mm-hmm. is the philosophy which should be used in software development as well right at least you create certain piece which runs which does the job and they then keep on optimizing to it so what i judge more in ki how the person is reaching the solution rather than exact solution probably some people might might be wrong in getting the solution <clears throat> but at least they tried they tried mm-hmm. in a more up, most appropriate way which which uh, there is the we can't say most of it at least in the right approach there was a right approach to reach towards the towards the right solution but there are certain folks who 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 knows the problem because they have read somewhere and they suddenly comes to the final solution that's not even interesting from the discussion perspective the bad part is that they don't even disclose that they know the solution and the best for me the good part is someone discloses that he knows the solution i still want him to run me through the solution right and then i question them okay uh, why do you think this is the right solution or why do you think this is the most efficient solution mm-hmm. what you would have done if you have not known this problem something like that right so and sometimes i even ask to code very simple questions like people that that people might not even expect it from me that i will ask this question probably something like uh, uh, is bst right is it's binary it sounds like a very simple problem but trust me 50% of the developers write it wrong from in the very first attempt right mm-hmm. these are certain basic things that i generally check for the freshers things little change with which when i go towards sd2 sd3 or em or sem level and that get more towards uh, for for the senior roles we generally check for the leadership skills as well how well they have mm-hmm. managed in the past and uh, uh, what are the high impact stories that they have worked that they have worked on uh what is the most uh, most interesting stories that they are proud of something like that and then we uh, get into the depth of some of those stories right and by depth i mean i i touch every each and every piece of that story right when you say that i created this software and this uh, this made it's a 50 million dollar for the company then i would like to listen your contribution in that particular story like did you were, were you the part of the problem solving or you just were the uh, or you just were, was executing that particular story did you think about the business outcome did you uh, were you measuring the the business impact uh, how are we measuring the different different part of things like there is a, there is a, there is there is a business aspect of a problem there is a product aspect of a problem there is an engineering aspect of the problem right you start hmm. from 0 to 1 when you only focus on mvp or the minimum viable product when you see the product market fit then you probably not concerned much about the engineering part when you see a fit then you go from 1 to 10 journey then you are more towards product and tech part of it and when things are fine you focus more on like making the software scalable so that when the software goes or the technology or product goes from 10 to 100 you should be able to handle the scale right so every part of the journey is very important so for seniors these these sort of uh, these sort of you know uh, 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 understanding is very important for mid level it's probably not just data structures you also being just on the designs part of as well because ultimately mm-hmm. when our new requirements come you don't have to only code you have to design the design the software right how multiple system interacts with each other how uh, data from one service to other service will go uh, how will the networking what with the protocol how will we interact it will be grpc call http call 
or it will be event driven system something like that right so and then we will question around ki uh, what will happen so there is a functional non functional requirements right If, let's say you have requirements of 1 million requests per second to be handled in less than 10 milliseconds every request right then how do you think of such solutions right probably you might have you might not have experience in that direction but at least we force you to think that uh, what you would have done if you have to you have this problem right Pro- because writing a writing a correct software versus writing a scalable software is a different skill right so you might right. write a application a e-commerce application which can take orders store data into database and when you try to retrieve all the orders can show the history but suddenly if that mm-hmm. software is being used by hundred or millions of user then everything start failing right so that's a right. different skill set that you uh, that you gain when you work for the high scale companies so that mm-hmm. is these are the slice slice different that we judge in those those candidates okay and each of the answer is so educative that even i'm learning the process and i am having so many questions in my mind i'm not going to ask all of those because of the time constraint but definitely yeah. um, a few of them um so like you have mentioned like for the leadership roles or for the senior roles you have these um you know certain extra things apart from the technical skills that you're looking for a person right uh, but when we talk about pressures uh, technical skills are definitely there anything apart from that that you look into uh, that you look for right Uh, I forgot to mention, but uh, apart from technical skills, uh, soft skills also matter. The communication skills, how how malleable are you to learn? Are you accepting? Are you listening to others or not? Right. Sometimes the attitude or the the way the the person talks, it feels like he's not he's not liking to listen you. Right. He's not accepting the feedback. He's not accepting the defeat. Probably. Right. So def- by defeat, I mean I meant he the solution that he proposed was not most optimized. you are always you are always allowed to uh, like debate that my solution is better but at least try to listen what the person in front of you is saying right so that is that is the listening part of it right when you listen because when you goes into the organization you will have to listen otherwise if you think i am always right then it's not going to work right so listening attitude is very important and uh, obviously for me communication skills is very important because uh, uh, if you can't communicate well then you then your work is not that great because probably in startups at least in a startup world you need to collaborate a lot right so and collaboration depends a lot on how you how well you communicate correct so mm-hmm. probably you might have done something or you are thinking something but if you are not able to explain what what impact that particular uh, work might get into the system or uh, how that particular thing might get implemented if you are not able to explain that then that all thinking is 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 of no no use right so communication skill is very important and that comes with the knowledge obviously so knowledge and communication go uh, along one on one right so both are complementary right. you should have knowledge you should have knowledge to communicate and you should have communication skill to communicate your knowledge right both are complementary right. so right. you should have knowledge that is understanding of technology for software engineering role, and then the communication skill so that you can communicate effectively with others as well right? so these are the soft skills which also matters okay 